Hello YouTube, it's Krosama, and here we have today is something from Konami, which I did not re really realize this, but this is the predecessor to the Megami device and the Frame Arms Girls. So let's go ahead and take a look at what this line is. So this line is called Busho Shinki, and it is a line that was actually first made as figures, which are these, and then later it you know became a net anime, and then it became an actual TV 12 part anime, but I'll go ahead and I'll describe a little bit. So these female girls are actually called Shinky, and what they do is battle, much like you've seen in the Frame Arms Girl line, as well as the Build Fighters line. So it's actually pretty unique and highly customizable, because there's peg holes all over, much like the Frame Arms Girl and Megami device. And if you did not know, well, apparently Kotobukiya bought the rights to this line, and then that's actually where there's... Megami device and the Frame Arms Girl came from. Uh, more or less, the Frame Arms Girl is kind of its own individual thing because that's based off of the uh, Frame Arms line, but it definitely goes into that as well as the Megami device. This line also has a couple of games that came out in the early 2010s, and it's eh, very lackluster. The PSP games, I kind of looked at some gameplay, wasn't really interested, and there is a there was an online multiplayer. But that one actually got discontinued and the servers are down. So with talking about the box, the box is just very lackluster and actually a little irritating because you don't see what the figure looks like unless you open the front panel. But when I was going to purchase this, the entire box was completely wrapped in plastic wrap. So I couldn't actually open it to see what the uh, figure looked like. Whereas some of the other ones in the, I guess in the later line, they actually don't have the uh, little flap on the front and you can just see the figure right there in the front of the box. And on the inside of the flap you just see a lot of details about the figure and I, I like this. I, I wish this would have been on the back instead of just getting illustrations. And then down here you see the online multiplayer game but yeah that's discontinued. And here is Arnval. So I'm assuming this is the main protagonist. I did see the first episode of the Net series and it looked exactly like her, so I'm, that's just my basic assumption, and she looks pretty decent. And here she is in her base form. So overall, the sculpture is not bad whatsoever. The main problem you're going to have is trying to make it stand on its own because the feet are just very, very small and just not as stable. But luckily, that's why we have this little included stand, so you can just peg her in right there, and you won't have any more issues trying to get her to stand. And we're taking a look at the facial expression, so nothing really going on there. It's a very blank stare, but this is the first of the line, so it's kind of to be expected. And I did see some of the kids later on in the series that actually did have some pretty good facial expressions. Uh, so I'm not really holding this one you know, too severe, but yeah, that facial expression is just kind of bad. The hair sculpt, however, is actually pretty damn good. Uh, I do like it. You, you get kind of like the little, you know, separation, some uh, some nice little strands. So overall, the hair does not look too bad. And you're also gonna get some short hair. So if you are not into the long hair for whatever reason, you can, you know, attach on this little tiny bit of hair on the back, and it looks pretty good. It blends in pretty decent, uh, except for the giant ball joint that's gonna be kind of a little sticking out. But other than that, it's uh, it's pretty nice and looks good for some short hair. Nothing really too special to say about the arms. They are very much, you know, reminiscent to the Megami device type arms. And, you know, you're going to see some metal right there for the screws. And it's, it's definitely not going to be that pleasing to the eye. But, yeah, overall, it's not too bad. So we're taking a look at the torso and the chest. The white is very, very high glossy, which looks actually pretty good. And you're going to have a little bit of yellow paint application as well as black for uh, the sides and the back. And looking at the legs, uh, definitely right here for the calves and the uh, the shins, it's just not really going to look that you know pleasing to the eye because this is going to be transformed. Uh, you basically take off parts of the legs for the transformation, and that's why it's kind of a necessity right there. And then looking up here, uh, up you know more into the uh, the thigh area is not going to be too bad. You get a little bit of gray as well as some yellow, but you know just right down where the shins are is just not going to look very pleasing. But other than that, uh, that's pretty good. So let's start looking at the articulation. Here's a ball joint and peg for the neck, so she is able to kind of roll around as well as go back and forth. Arm basically moves all the way around. Swivel at the bicep. Nice little bicep crunch. Decent bend at the elbow. Hand can move back and forth and can rotate around, but the problem with this is, let's say you try and move it right here, 
you're gonna kind of like almost not rip it off but these are easily able to just kind of pop off the little peg that it's on so you got to watch out you really have to grab it at the base if you want to move it torso is on a peg and ball joint leg can move forward and with the little joint mechanism it can definitely push forward a little bit more it's also going to be on a ball joint so the hip can move around very tight swivel at the thigh very good bend at the knee and then the foot can move back and forth as well as side to side now as far as hands she is going to have fists some open hands some trigger fingers and the same type of trigger fingers without a hinge is basically one solid peg much like the Megami device so this one can move this one cannot and that's to help stabilize for the weaponry now let's go ahead and start attaching all the armor And here she is in her mech mode. Now I looked all over the internet and I really cannot find what this particular mode is called. Uh, I know they are shinkies, but other than that, I, I couldn't really find any information. So if anyone down in the comment section below wants to just chime in, let me know if this mode is called anything in particular, that would be extremely helpful. Now looking at the legs, they are actually really nice. Uh, they do have some peg holes right there in the front, so if you want to peg anything right in there, you can definitely do so. And she also has like these little side skirt shields of sorts, but they attach onto the leg. And the chest will now be a more solid piece instead of, you know, the, um, she's sporting this really nice kind of little antenna right there on the forehead, but also the helmet is super, super dope. And with looking at the backpack, the backpack is pretty damn good. It's going to have lots of mobility and it's going to have these nice little fuel thrusters. So pretty large wingspan actually. And she will also be sporting two of these really nice beam sabers, two of these shields, this really awesome pistol, and an awesome submachine gun. And you also have, and lastly you have this behemoth of a cannon. Now this thing is super damn cool, but the one thing that kind of throws me off is going to have these bipods, but you know, you're always going to be in the air with this, so I'm not seeing any kind of usage for this. So I'm the kind of person that would prefer to just go ahead and take it directly off, just so that way you can take a little weight off of it whenever you're posing. And as you can see, the weapon is pretty much just as big as her. So for my final thoughts, I think this little figure is just pure awesome and badass. Um, I Once again, I picked it up for roughly around like $20 to $25, and I think if it was going to be anywhere above like maybe $35, I probably wouldn't have picked it up. Uh, even then, I think $35 to $40 is still a pretty good price tag, uh, considering on a lot of sites I've been seeing, is it's going around between $50 and $70. So. If you do find it for a lower price, I would definitely, I would highly suggest you pick it up. And with this figure being a part of the Megami device line, well, the predecessor to the Megami device line since Kotobukiya picked up the license, I'm even more intrigued to go ahead and pick up even more of these because of the fact that I just really love the Mecha Girl aesthetics. It's something I, I was always intrigued with, uh, I think back in maybe 2011. Uh, when Bandai released one of theirs with the uh, the Gundam Wing version. So I am just wanting to pick up more of these. I'm, I'm very excited about them and I do see a lot of them in Hiroshima kind of ranging up to the hundreds of dollars. So that's not really going to be in my budget, but the ones that are about 
uh, seventy dollars or less, I will definitely plan on picking up some of those eventually. Uh, hopefully, maybe next month I can just take a little trip, pick up one more, and review it, and just you know see if I still like this line. And if I do, I'll pick up more. If not, then I might just go ahead and, and finish off with uh, the Megami devices. But other than that, guys, definitely appreciate you guys for watching. And like always, please rate, comment, subscribe. Let me know what your thoughts are on this kit, all the thoughts are on the video, and I'll be seeing y'all in the next video. Bye-bye.